Tium dhe tjua taj. So you need more time. But you should be ready. So that's why you turned on your stuff and were not doing anything. So you relaxed a bit. So I am sorry for this provocation. So in this way I try to make you to relax a bit. Now let us come to another example. You see, all my examples are quite simple. This example is about the complement. So let so let us construct construct the complement together. Okay? So people who will be involved in construction of the complement would understand what I mean. So So here is PP1. We know say how to construct this point P. Let me call it P south and point P north. Okay? At least I assume that you you kind of understand. Um, so what we haven't constructed yet is uh, the space is uh, the space that, that that was CP1. So what we actually constructed is C and point in it. Okay. So we may have a question, how to get CP1? Idea is that we say consider C and point P south in it. South is the south pole. Then also consider C and the point P north in it. Now, glue them together. Okay? So, if I intersect this with this, I will get, of course, C star. Okay, along C star. So it's interesting to understand two things. What C star is? Second, how C star belongs to C. When I say how C star belongs to C, I mean the following. That theoretically it's clear how C star belongs to C. Because it's a set of all points except zero. I'd like to understand it algebraically. So C in algebra geometric correspondence corresponds to to the algebra of polynomials okay so what i need to understand is what stands here and then what is this morphism Okay. You see, understanding this algebra 
means understanding this line. Okay. So here we have three questions. So once again, we are trying to understand in which sense a complement belongs to to the ambient space. So maybe the first thing would be to understand what is an algebra that's, uh, that stands here. So we have to invent an algebra whose maximal ideals are C stars, are labeled by C stars and not by C. Do you have any idea how to do this? How to take out points from the space? So I actually want you to think about it. Because I want to know how you feel the subject. Here I mean feel and not know the, the definition. Okay, I see you don't know the sub, the, this piece. So let me consider another example, okay? How many points, points, in the sense maximal ideal a field has and also how many figures so do you know this question so suppose you have a field here by field, I mean a, I mean an algebra when uh, all elements but zero are invertible. By the way, do you know this definition? Okay. So what can we say about ideals in the field? Uh, probably we can um, consider Laurent polynomials. Um, e, uh, I'm talking about the previous uh, example. Okay. But, but uh, you see, you, you will come with this idea, but now let us discuss fields first. Okay. So, uh, so what about the field? So it's an exercise in algebra. So let us try to work out this question together. Suppose we have a field, okay? The notion of ideal is purely algebraic. 
Let me consider principal ideal. So it's A times elements of the field that I called F. What can we say about this ideal? It's an ideal. It's a principal ideal. <coughs> It turns out that this ideal has some nice properties. <coughs> so this ideal is either something or something. <coughs> so the answer would be to fill in this question mark. So if you have ideals in the field, then either one or another. Before we'll think about it, I'm pretty sure that you had courses in abstract algebra. But uh, mostly when people are teaching, are teaching these courses, they're giving definitions and asking you to prove some lemmas and theories. They're not explaining why do you need to study this subject. As you see, my approach is uh, very different. As Ms. Who says, it's either zero or F, uh, the whole F. Right. So it's either zero or full F. So you know, you see what it means. So the full F is not interesting. So it's, so this ideal is interesting. It means that field corresponds to a point. There are no other ideals in the field. So if I try to come, if I try, if I'm trying to If I'm trying to imagine the algebra geometric object that corresponds to the field, it is like a point. Now, let me come to our main example, namely polynomials. So, so here we have a ring of polynomials, right? As you know, it is not a field. Could we embed it in some field? Or what is the best embedding of polynomials into some field? So it, it, it is, of course, studied, but you don't, don't mostly, but most of you don't know what does it mean from the point of algebra geometric correspondence to embed a ring in a field. But we will see. Oh, I have some interaction. Yes, yes. 
Okay, so last thing is what you are the more what you denote by C of X with with brackets. So there are different notations. Yes. Thank you in E. Thank you in Ning. In Ning. You see in Ning nodes that polynomials are embedded in in the field of fractions. Actually, they have P of X over Q of X. So this set for Q not equal not identically zero is called the field of rational function. Okay? This has to be studied in algebra. So we have embedding. We also know that this is kind of a point. So this kind of a point could go where? So now I'm considering algebra geometric. Okay, I'll write it like this. You see, actually, I think that such things should be studied at uh, the end of the high school. Because there is nothing complicated here. It's just when you are start summing fractions, it is like 50 year of education. You and you start polynomials, it's a sixth year of education. You can start doing this. You see, I'm writing it this way, not as uh, Ining proposed, because for people who are not uh, experts in this subject, sorry to say, it's better to see how does it look like. So this thing in algebra geometric correspondence corresponds to some point. So this thing corresponds to the complex plane. Okay. So it means that we have some kind of a map. So this goes somewhere. I don't understand why you say that a field corresponds to a point because of uh, because it has no non-trivial ideal. Yes. Exactly. To be a point. Suppose we have a point. So there are functions of the points. Mm -hmm. They are just complex numbers. Then it has an ideal, zero. Zero is an ideal. Yes. Zero is an ideal. Zero is an ideal yes. in any algebra. Yeah. But I, I still don't see how the zero ideal corresponds in which way 
the, the zero ideal corresponds to a point, to a point. In, in which sense? Okay. So let, let, let me try to see. Suppose I have a field like C. Mm -hmm. Okay. Suppose we have uh, so so C should correspond to set of all functions. They are constants. And the uh, principal idea. is the full algebra but we know that this ideal we should think on about ideal as a, as a space of functions that vanish and that vanish in a figure so complex numbers are not vanishing at all. So in some sense, uh, they vanish on, the, on an empty set. OK? Mm -hmm. So another idea is zero. So zero is zero, so it vanishes everywhere. So actually, you see, for a field, you have two ideals. One. Yes, I, I think I, I get you what you mean. Because uh, do you mean that uh, for an algebra corresponding to spaces and uh, and I do of the algebra correspond to subspaces. Yes, so so okay. Oh, no. So 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 where so when you have subspaces, you have uh, you have an algebra corresponding to subspace. So it's a quotient of an algebra. Yes. Yeah. yes. You you have the subspace defined as the zero of an ideal of the of that algebra. And yeah. the sense so, 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 so let us so let us consider an example, you see. So suppose you have a ring of polynomials, okay? Where the figure inside this ring is ideal, like principal ideal. So this is an ideal A. It shows how point lives inside P of X. Now let us consider the quotient, the quotient. It is clear that this quotient is complex number. So it is a set of uh, functions on the point. Mm -hmm. So yeah, the set of functions on the point yeah. is C. See, okay, I'll I'll redraw it again. You, you see, my uh, teaching position is: if there is a question, it should be answered. Mostly, because uh, many people, I don't know, non-empty space of people can have this question, but they are shy or busy uh, to ask it. So I am very grateful to people who are asking questions. It means that there's a space of people 
for home it's, it's unclear with no name so it has to be explained consider the following It belongs to. It belongs to. And this guy belongs to he or that. But here is on the level of ideas, right? Now let us now let us come to uh, figure. So what is this? This is the double figure. This figure is a point. Here is a map. This figure is another point. And here is a map. Okay. So the biggest idea is something that belongs to both of them. With non-trivial intersection. So the only set that belongs to this sense simultaneously is an empty set. Because empty set belongs to any set. Okay? So do you know this? If S is a set, okay? So in some sense, if you consider the full algebra as an ideal, it corresponds to an empty set. Because the full algebra contains all ideals, okay? By definition. So we should correspond to a universal figure. So if we, we imagine this figure as a set of points, it means that it is a universal figure that is inside all figures, okay? Even if they are different points. What would it be? What belongs to everybody? Empty set, okay? You see, it is the only way to make this uh, function. So actually, you see, here we are trying to solve equations. X minus A equals to zero. Here we are trying to solve equation X minus B equals to zero. You are solving this equation or this equation, then you take the system, okay, of equations. System. X minus A is zero, X minus B is zero, and of course, I is not B. So what is the space of solution to such a system? It's empty. So this figure is, of course, the empty set. Okay? So that's the idea of inversion of error. Okay? Thing that belongs to everything is empty.
So when I say maximal ideal, so maximal, it means maximal but different from the full algebra. Okay. Now, so here I have. So here I have the set of ideals, and I have the following diagram. A belongs to A B. B belongs to A B. And also empty set. Okay, not is not belongs. Some sorry. So it is this contravariant function I was talking about in examples and in application. So another way, consider algebra A as a set of conditions, okay? I had the set theoretical thing or set of questions. And then sometimes you answer yes, sometimes you answer no. And in this way, you are forming a set. So like, are you blue? Are you white? Okay. You answer yes or no, and in this way we are making a set. Now, suppose, so what the algebra is? The algebra is a set of all possible questions. Then, which guy answer by yes on all possible questions? Empty set. It's called that empty set has so elements of empty set have all properties okay so when i say that empty set belongs to to this and to this it basically means is so, so it, it answers this question. So, you, so when you think at A, when you think at B, okay? You just need to think about it. Because in this duality, once again, the, the algebra uh, is a set of questions. If you always answer yes, either the algebra contains of only zeros. So we do not consider such algebra. Or if algebra has uh, an interesting question, then most probably it contains also the negotiation to this question. And you are, and if you answer yes on both the question and the Gaussian, it is an empty set. Okay. So now let us see what is. So here we have this this figure. Now let us see what is so-called the algebra of functions on this figure. If we consider figures as spaces on their own, okay? So here we have, let me call it EA, EA polynomial factorized by EB. Here is polynomial factorized by A, and here is polynomial 
derived by the broader EA diagram. Okay? So I think I need to write it. I need to rewrite it. I'm sorry for being lazy or pretty. So once again, that's how I explain things. I explain deep things on the simplest examples, okay? According to the title of my course. So how to write it in the best possible way? P of X contain I A contain I B. Now here we have here we have a figure phi A, phi B that corresponds. And here we have an empty set. And here we have empty set belonging to phi A. So this is its corresponding. Here is the empty set belonging to phi B. And this is phi A. So here we have this. I go a little bit. Okay, so this is the diagram. So this diagram, as you see, has how many points? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. How many connections? It has, as you may check, 12 relays. So what is uh, the ge geometrical picture of something that contains uh, eight, that contains uh, eight, vertices and 12 edges the cube exactly so do you see the cube here it's a yeah. smashed cube i have to put it on the plane do you see the cube here so you see this algebra geometric lines may be considered as vertical lines, okay? Then the upper, the upper squares may be considered as an inclusion of ideals. The lower squares may be considered as inclusion of sets. So do you want me to draw this as a cube? Or it is clear enough that it's a cube. If you wish, I can draw it. Kim. I guess it's clear. So for if for if it's clear for you. So maybe somebody write. Ining. Should I draw the cube? cube. I think it's clear like this. And also I noticed that uh, when you when you draw this diagram, 
there are two ways of obtaining the algebra of a uh, phi AB. We can do it directly, either directly or we can pass by the, the intermediate figure. So, so, so you see, so, so you see, and we can go all the way along this cube. Okay. You can start from this. So all paths are uh, either correspondences or embeddings. So the way how empty space is embedded into two sets, into two element sets, is that empty space belongs to one element set and this belongs to a two element. So still, you see, I like this picture. So vertical lines are algebra geometry. So upper thing is on the level of ideal p of x i a i b i a times i b you see when you squash it like this then uh, the vertical goes inside the horizontal if you happen to squash a box, you see that it goes this way. And here I have, of course, point A, empty space, point B, and here I have. So this is this cube. So this is this simple relation. You see how many arrows there are. Now, we have another thing. Having ideal, we also have an algebra. P of X by IB. That is C. Is it clear why C of X over quotient over IB is uh, C, complex number? Because for each polynomial here, I compute its value as a point B. So, so here, Polynomial of x goes to polynomial of b. And of course, the ideal is the kernel of this map. Okay? So this C is, of course, the space of functions on B. That's why C itself is considered as a space of functions on a so-called point, you see? So functions on the point, of course, induced by polynomial, are, uh, are values of function of polynomials at the B. The same thing happens here. So, what happens here? So, so it's not like this. So I'm writing this diagram. So it's the level of algebra. 
I here I have what? Here I have P of X divided by E A. That is also P. And what do I have here? Here I have P of X divided by IA times IP. So what is this space? As a vector space. First, let us see what is this. Okay, so still, how can I is it C squared? This is what? C squared. So, uh, so uh, you see what it are. So Dean says that it is C times C. No, not time. Oh. C plus. So C squared is C plus C, right? So it depends how you consider it. If you consider it as an algebra, you say C plus C. If you consider it as a space, you say C squared. But this is C plus C as a vector space. Moreover, if A is not equal to B, this space has a very interesting base. Let me tell you, there are distinguished classes. minus a so these are numbers right of device of course it belongs to p of x so i consider class of this element and let me call this thing e b Let me consider the following. And I will call it EA. So now what is the multiplication table in this base? So what is EB square? What is EA square? And what is EA times EB? Do you have any idea? So let us first work e out EA times EB. EA times it? EB is zero? Great. Thank you, Tim. Because in order to multiply classes, we multiply representatives. Okay? And then take the class of the product. It's a definition of multiplication of classes right and uh, all the rest is the correctness of this definition do you agree so when we multiply these representatives we of course get element from the ideal and that's zero now 
What is E A squared? You see, I'm. That's what you should uh, study at school. These are fundamentals of algebraic geometry. So it's technically easy. However, it's kind of deep. What's going on? So I, I think I will do the computation on the board. Okay. So what I like about team and uh, about in ink, that they are definitely writing something, not showing things, not uh, watching Facebook or Facebook is banned in China or whatever. Not even staring at me, you see, they're writing and it's great. So they, they are definitely getting it, but for the rest, I would compute X minus A times X minus B over B to the minus A squared. Oh, sorry, X minus B. X minus so I would com be computing E okay let me compute E A squared with X minus B X minus B over A minus B squared. So what is it? Here I can say that X minus B is X minus A plus A minus B. So when I multiply X minus A times X minus B, I go to the ideal. So I factor it out. So the only contribution is this. It's A minus B, X minus B, a minus B squared, so I cancel. Ah! Oh. I made a computation. I also can make it. To do this computation, you, you don't need to be a rocket scientist. You just need to know how to multiply fractions. But from multiplying fractions, you see what happens? It is EA. So this thing is called decomposable or semi simple algebra. In this basis, they do not interact. Multiplication on EB on EA is like this. It doesn't involve EB. Now let me tell you why. It's because the EA EA is a function whose values at point A is one. While its value at point B is zero. And the same thing happens for another function. So now we actually see how the C plus C come from. They are coming together 
with distinguished basis for A not equal to B. You may call this basis Gauss-Marin basis. Because this basis is related to geometrical structure of the figure. And then if you move A and B around, you have a connection. Okay. That is called Gauss Manning connection. So it is the simplest example. And if you and if we write what's going on in terms of A and B, we have. Uh, so-called local system. You can parallelly transport the algebra. So let me put here the space of A and B. So actually, this is the space that is C plus. Another C, so, so these are parameters. And coordinate here is A minus C. So here actually I have C star because I want to cut out zero out of it. Okay. So actually, all this problem. So all could be considered as follows. We are studying not equation x minus a, x minus b. We may equally, by shifting position of x, study equation x minus c, x plus c. Up to shift in x, okay? Because the only thing that is important is if roots are the same or different. Now we have x squared minus c squared. Okay? So it's another way to write down the idea of a, a. not idea, it's the, the element. So, so, so after, so by shifting X, I can put it to, to this form. Now, what is interesting? is that this is a polynomial of second order. And it is natural to parameterize the polynomials by their coefficients, right? Let me put, let me call it like this. So here is the plane with coordinates being D. And over this plane, there are algebras. They that are that are called C of X moduli X square minus B. They're two dimensional. So I'll write down fiber as something two-dimensional. 
there was a connection to it. And but if you go around in D plane, you will have non-trivial monodromy. Do you know what would happen if you go all the way around zero in D plane? Tim, maybe you can guess. becomes plus D or if I go all the way around this basis would be inverted it's a Mobius line so what are the roots Roots are square root of D and minus square root of D. So what, what happens if I go around D equal to zero? So if I change- They switch D, places? Yes, exactly. Do you know how this interchange of roots is called in the literature after 1841. Please guess the name of French mathematician who discovered this phenomenon. When? No. Earlier, much earlier. I, I told you that he discovered it in uh, 1841. Galois? Yes. Galois. Two roots are exchanged. And this interchange of these two roots is a permutation of roots. And this is a Galois group. You see, when I was a schoolboy, people were teaching us this quadratic equation. And they gave us a lot of exercises. So this equation, so that equation. But they never told us this story. And if you have not two points, but three points, I think you may guess that you will get all kinds of permutations. And this is the essence of the Galois theorem of non solvability of uh, equations of degree five in radicals. You see where we went, studying the simplest example. So how would it be that we have a monodromy here? It's because the space of parameters in this case D and D is for discriminants as you understand. Has the following property. If D is not zero, we have two distinct points. If D is zero, we have another interesting uh, algebra. 
that is polynomials moduli x plus so when d is zero we have c of x moduli x squared times polynomial of x so it's our fa or my favorite double point So two roots join, and of course they form the two-dimensional algebra. So as a space, it is still C square, but connection that does not go there because connection is based on distinguish on distinguishing which root was first and which is the second. So you see how much fun can you get playing with quadratic polynomial. Okay. So now please see that the space of functions over a point is C, okay? And the only idea, and the only non-empty idea Corresponding to the point is uh, zero inside C. And the place where, say, one vanishes is an empty space. That's why the full algebra corresponds to an empty space. So one point. The algebra is say C. There is ideal. That is uh, zero. And then we have, sorry, this is algebra geometric correspondence. No, sorry, it's sorry. So if algebra is C, then from algebra geometric correspondence, algebra corresponds on empty space. And zero corresponds to a point, and we have this idea. So zero corresponds to a function that vanish everywhere, right? So it corresponds to the full space, okay? Okay.
So now, let me check how you got me. Consider the following ideas. You see. So what is E A, E B, E C? Could you read me them before doing computation? Dictate. Tim. Um, all right, let's try it. Uh, e A should be X minus B times X minus C and divided by A minus B and A minus C. Exactly. So E A has value one at A and zero otherwise. So EB is, of course, X minus A, X minus C, B minus A, B minus C. So when we multiply them, of course, we can use this rule, right? But it's clear that the function, that one, that the function, this one, has value one. At one point and zero it doesn't. And this function has value one at another point and zero and other. So when we multiply them, we will get zero. Zero function on three points. Yes, this is unipotent basis. And the A E B is zero. Okay. It's that simple. Well, now, so Tim, I'm going, am I going with the proper speed? Or I should go faster from your point of view. I guess we can go a little bit faster. A little bit faster, you see, but. Oh. Yaning is writing. Yaning is writing. An interesting formula that that A over I A times I A B. I think the first, I think the first one is wrong. Ah, I did you, it. you see, but you see, uh, I have to cancel. Okay, if if you can write a wrong formula, it means <laughs> that it is a sensible. Yeah. <laughs> you see, if you can make a mistake, mm -hmm. it means that you understand partially. If you are not doing mistake, it means that either you know completely or you copied it from, from somewhere, okay? So, so this is uh, the space of functions on A, 
and the admin writes that it is A over IA times IB. So this is the space of functions on two points. So it was, but it, but this corresponds to the space with two points. And he said, okay, we may put equations there. And uh, then we may factor out. So I'm still a bit confused. Because the second uh, thing should belong here. So uh, So Janin writes the following formula. So we have a ring of functions on two points. And then we quotient out by what? By ideal in this space. Ah, so, but, it is, but it's already an algebra. We have to quotient out by ideal, I would say. That is proportional to x minus a times something that lives here. I wrote, I wrote I A quotiented by I A times I B. Yes. So I, I'm, I see, I'm just trying to see if it is uh, correct. Yes, yes, it's correct. Yes, it's correct. Thank you. Uh, I. Uh, because I wanted okay. to, I, I wanted to have the commutativity of the diagram where when you have when you pass from a larger, smaller figure to larger figure. I mean that, I could see the smaller figure as a as a, as a part of the. The whole space, or, or I can see it as as part of a larger figure, and then the larger figure is a so part of here, the here space. There is this cube. Yes, 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 of, of course, of course. So one has, yes. So smaller figure as a part of the larger figure. So you can actually do this. So actually here are just uh, edges, but the category contains not of edges, but of what team category? is formed by paths. I'm sorry. Category are paths on the horizontal square. So actually, say here, we haven't, there is an inclusion of I A, I B inside C of X. So it is going like this, or it is going like this. Okay. So as Janine says, two points. So we have, there are two ways to include this thing here and here. And the face says that it is the same. Because two paths could be different. So commutativity 
means that if you compose this and this or, or all the way around, you will get the same thing. It is not obvious because on the level of paths, these are two different paths. Sorry. But they both correspond to the same inclusion. And this is, as Janine said, is commutativity of the diagonal. So if we do L if we do algebra geometric correspondence, similar thing happens downstairs. The way how empty space belongs to A belongs to A B. It is commutative diagonal. And if you don't like empty space, you may consider a three point set, okay? And you will still have commutative diagram. So commutative diagrams here and here are related by algebra geometric correspondence. So uh, thank you for reminding me this, because actually here we meet for the first time what is called the higher category. So if there are objects, it's not a category, it's a set. If there are objects and morphisms with the composition, it is category, and if there are equivalents of composition or commutativity, it is called a higher morphism. So actually we say that that result obtaining by composition of these two morphisms and the second two morphisms are people say the same however as i told on my talk it's better to say that there are equivalents and this equivalence is exactly the essence of the higher category okay Well, now let me study the very last thing. I actually wanted it to be done as an exercise, but uh, in this way, I will spend too much time. So let me consider something in between. So here are rationals, P of X over Q of X. Here was P of X. So what is in between? P of, P of X over X minus A. Is it okay to consider such thing? So do, do, do elements of this type form a ring? Hmm? Yeah, yes, in the fraction field, so, you, make, you make everything invertible, but you can choose just to make some elements invertible. And that's yeah. something but in between. these do not form a ring. No, because there is not closed by multiplication. Exactly. So this is the ring. Because you are inverting not over any element, 
you are inviting over so-called multiple multiplicative uh, system so multiplicative system is such a system that if you multiply two elements from the system or set you still get an element from that set so this is the simplest multiply multiplicative system now the question Study ideal spheres. So this is a point. This point belongs here, and this belongs here. So the question is uh, to write down the spaces or figures. Now we see that they are the same. So first we need to find an ideal sphere. Could you guess any ideal here? So you know what I say. If you want to study ideals, first look at principal ideals, all right? So principal ideals here are, of course, P of X, X minus A, to the n and here I put of course x minus b so I take the element and take a principal ideal so I multiply this element by n the element of the root of the ring okay so I have this ideal So I need to study two things. First, that ideals for different Bs are different. And second, what happens if B equals to A? So what happens if B equals to A? Then the ideal becomes the whole ring? Yes, but we already studied. So this principal ideal that corresponds to the full ring corresponds to what? What is the figure that corresponds to the full ring? The empty, the empty set. set. Empty set. So. If B equals A, it is just an empty set. But we can get this empty set even without multiplication, multiplication by X minus A. So it means that this form of principal idea does not generate us any figure. However, if B is not equal to A, I think we have something. So is what the, do we have? Is the point B? So we, you, you, you may say it's, it's point B. However, how to say that it's point B? Probably we need to find ki some kind of element. Okay, yes, exactly. It's a, exactly it's a point B. So you may so you see that that these principal ideals correspond to this correspond to the plane from which the point A is cut out. Okay. 
Now, how can I get a cut out two points? Say A and C. What would be the ring when I'm cutting out two points? P of X over X minus A to the N times X, I, X minus C to the um, Two different powers and A yeah. and C. Because I have to have multiplicative system. So in this way, in algebra geometric correspondence, here I have the plane. Here I am cutting out A. Here I am cutting out A and C. So what is a rational function? What is the geometry or figure associated to it? So since you are not answering immediately, it means that uh, I found the proper question. Is the template set? No. Well, so what it is? Empty set. No. So uh, by the way, who is talking? I. I am talking. Ah, no, it's not the empty set. Mm -hmm. Because, uh, because uh, it is uh, a, uh, okay, so, so it's a field, so it's a point. It's a field. It's, it's zero. You see? I mean, so it's it's interesting to think about it. Look, we have complex plane. Then we take out all points out of it. Then it's it's infinity. But 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 there is something left. Yeah, it's so, infinity. so what so what is left is not infinity. Okay. So people so people say that there is another point and it is called the common point. So that is still there. And this common point corresponds exactly to this field. Okay. The title of my course is Ideas of Mathematical Physics. No, ideas and surprises of mathematical physics in simplest example. So now we came to a surprise. And this surprise is if you take complex plane and if you take out all points, there is something that is left. And this is the famous gross index uh, common point that corresponds to the field of rational function. Later on, we will study topology here. And you will see that this common point is in the vicinity of any other points. So, you know, I am happy uh, because would I go faster, I would lose almost everybody or maybe just everybody. So it would mean zero transfer of knowledge, okay? So I hope 
that I transferred some knowledge. And this knowledge is not only knowledge about uh, the, the algebra geometric correspondence. This knowledge, the meta knowledge is that, uh, no, that not only it is understandable, the knowledge is that you do not need to know higher uh, concepts or uh, higher computation or some computational technique to understand it. It's enough to study polynomials, quadratic cubic equations, and you will understand the idea, what is going on. This meta knowledge is mostly there are simple examples, okay? And you may understand the new subject not by the set of definitions, but starting from the simplest example, okay? So it is meta knowledge. And you see how you can, and you see here we can construct this cube out of two points. Okay. So you see, I actually have no time to start extra topic because uh, we are working for three hours exactly. And uh, from my experience, you should be tired. Am I right? Team, are you tired? Well, a little bit, thank you. Okay, so from my experience, it's impossible to withstand more than three hours of such brainwash. So the best thing would be to think it through. Okay. I mean what I mean what happened. So see, so now we see, uh, okay. So in particular, now we know, I will say some words, okay. Now we know how to glue things. So what CP1 is, we have C, so we have two copies of C. So this is CP1. So the algebra, so if the space, now, now some terminology, space corresponding uh, to an algebra is called a fine scheme, okay? So if you can cut the space into pieces that are a fine scheme. And if you can glue them this way, then it's called a scheme. So my question is, is it understandable? Can you repeat it? <laughs> okay, so, so definition number one. In algebra geometric correspondence, 
you associate to a ring or to a, to a algebra. So all algebras they are over C. You associate to it a space. And this is called affine scheme. And we have some examples. So this scheme cal comes together with all its figures. You see? Like person is coming with all its memories. Okay? Now, how can we understand the space that is not space that is not an affine scheme huh? so in particular how should we understand pp1 what what you know is there are no holomorphic functions on CP1. There are a lot of holomorphic functions on C and they are polynomials, right? There are holomorphic functions on C star. So people say Laurent series, yes? I think it was Artyom who was saying this. But there are no holomorphic functions on CP1. So the question is what to do? So one of the approaches is the following. Let us cut out, let us cut down the space XA into a fine schemes. Maybe with overlapping. Okay. So we take CP1. We have North Pole and South Pole. If we cut out North Pole, we will definitely get C. Okay? So here we are cutting out North Pole. If we cut out South Pole, we get another C. And we have a common C star in that. So we would like to glue these two C's along C star. And this, it's written by this diagram. And this should produce us something that corresponds to CP1, okay? And we will discuss it next time on algebraic section. I mean particular or organizational. I noticed that uh, in uh, what you uh, in what you just uh, erased uh, the the correspondence between px and the px over x uh, minus a uh, to the n and uh, there is also a, an inverse of inclusion like px p of x the set of p of x corresponds to c and uh, 
and the other one corresponds to C minus A, but then the, the correspondence between the between the set and the and the figure they are not the same as we as the correspondence that we were used to. It's like a why why did you just say? Okay, let's see. Because sometimes the 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 set of polynomials they correspond to the empty set. Sometimes it corresponds to the whole the whole complex plane. So okay, sometimes well, well, okay. yeah. So well let me try to understand what you are saying. Yes. So there is this ring. Yes. So here we can multiply and add. When you add, then you have a formula of common denominator. Okay. Uh, I think before the the set of functions, they correspond to the the zeros of the set of uh, the common zeros of the set. Okay. So there was one. There was one So 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 what I wrote here is a ring. Yeah. And also the ideal. So being a ring, it contains something. Being ideal. It belongs somewhere. Okay? Yes. So, so now which piece of this process do you want me to discuss? I think of uh, when you when you were talking about a field, you you said that a field corresponds to a point, and at that time I thought that a field was uh, the field is obtained by by the original algebra quotiented by a. Uh, by uh, a maximal ideal, but then, uh, but this time the the field of fraction, uh, the field of rational fractions, it's not uh, it's not obtained as a quotient, but it's a larger, it's a larger okay. thing uh, into which into which the original algebra is embedded. So I think that we are talking about two things at the same time. Yes. Yes, I see. It's a it's a deep remark. That's why it's not it's not a standard point. Okay. However, uh, it behaves as a point mm -hmm. since it has no internal structure mm -hmm. because the field is different. Mm -hmm. So, in all other points, the field of function was a complex number. And here we say that the field is different, right? The, the, here the correspondence is different. Uh, is different. Here the correspondence is rather the the here the algebra corresponds to the algebra of functions defined on that figure, rather than the the, the annihilator of the figure. So let me see. So 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 let me so let me try to so so let us try to to look at what happens. So we have p of x over q of x. Okay. We have embedding of of p of x here, and that is exactly a c of x, right? Yes. So, in algebra geometric correspondence, we may say that the figure corresponding here goes to where. goes to the figure corresponding here. Okay. But there are there are two kind of correspondences. You could see you could say that uh, C of X corresponds to the empty set. 
because the because the empty set is the common zero of c of x. And then you could also okay. say that it could. Okay. Oh, I, I, I saw what you are saying. Mm -hmm. You are you are saying the following. You are saying that this point. No. Is different from the point corresponding to C. Yes, yes, and I so think that it's correspondence in a in a different way. Yes, yes, it corresponds. Yes, you are right. It corresponds in a different way. So actually, the, this is this type of point, but it's a point. There is C of X. With all these points mm -hmm. inside, but since there is a map from here to here, we should conclude that there is a map of this point here. Uh, while this map is uh, is not the map to any finite point. I still have a question concerning yeah. this. When you explain that fields corresponds to points, the, the correspondence you used uh, was the correspondence between ideals and the, and the zero set. But here yeah. you, you have not explained that for, for the kind of correspondence that we consider here, the fields also correspond to a point. So, so, so we yes. have correspondences so, so, for kind of the correspondence. So fields correspond to. So fields correspond to. So, the, so they so when I say that they correspond to points, I just mean that they do not have internal structure. They do not have figures mm -hmm. inside them. Mm. Yes, I think. I think I, I understand. Yes, because when you say that fields corresponds to points, it's because then uh, then it's the set of function. When you, when I have the the example of C, it's the set of function defined on a on a single point. Yes. Okay. You can understand it in this way, yes. Okay. So, so it is kind. Of, okay. So we can go on with this discussion, but now it's yes. Discussion is deep. Okay. But it's a bit too late. Okay. Maybe we can just discuss it on the seminar, but uh, but. Uh, okay. So you... so if if you are going to discuss it, say. On the yeah. seminar, etc. Mm. So I, I, I have a rule. My rule is that there should be at least two persons coming to discuss mm. with me. Okay. So mm -hmm. two is enough. But if uh, nobody would go and discuss, you are welcome to come to an office hour. So it means that we can just arrange a discussion. Okay. Okay. But uh, could you make the office hours during the day for China? Of course, of course, I am not going to make. So for Chinese people, I'm mm -hmm. going to make office hours during the day in China. Thank you. For people from the West and United States, I do it. Uh, I will I will do it uh, when it's convenient for them. Mm -hmm. okay. So at least please write me your schedule, and we will figure out. Ah, we'll do it like this. So we will discuss on the on schemes during the uh, office hour with you okay and if somebody else is going to come they're very welcome but in order to invite people we need to choose the topic and uh, the time right 
So please propose the time and uh, put topic uh, better. And we will make an office hours for you. Such that other people would be welcome. Is it okay? Yes, thank you. I think so would... please write me a letter. Okay. By the way, I actually want everybody to communicate with me. So I would understand uh, what do you really want and how to help you and how to transfer some knowledge to you, okay? Okay, so now I think it's too late. In China, you have to finish your dinner before seven. And we are definitely out of time. <laughs>